Hey everybody, it's Ruth the Traveling Quilter. So it is Wednesday, March the 6th now, and it's time for a Wednesday Quickie. If you saw the little short, you're gonna be drooling over this, and if you figured out what that is, we're gonna make some baby bibs, or baby burp claws, which could be bibs also. So these are real easy to do, a great, great, great shower or baby gift. Everybody loves them. I've had people ask for more after I've given them the gift that's been, can you make me some more? So I have downloaded a pattern, and it's actually three patterns. And these come from a website. It's called MyChildhoodTreasures.com. There you go. There are other sites that have very similar ones. This is kind of the dog bone one, kind of like our dog bone pillow was. If you have that dog bone um, pattern from last week's tutorial, you could use that and then just add a little extension on there and cut on your fold. So there's one that's more of a dog bone. There is one that is a straighter edge and then the cutout for the shoulder like that. And then there's one that is just straight. So I went to the Calico Cow yesterday in Roswell, New Mexico to get some flannel, all my flannels at home so I didn't have any here but I ran up there for an appointment and then stopped in and got three half yard cuts from each half yard cut you can get two burp cloths so I've got six burp cloths here while I was there I also bought this this is not flannel but this it's a playing cards Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos it's a timeless treasure fabric I just love this one it's got you know, the little skeletons and the, um, when there's sombreros, they're just playing cards. So I just love this. I was the first one to get any off the bolt. Uh, just a timeless treasure. It doesn't say the name, but look at this salvage. If you can see that, all the different little color skull heads, are, those are all the colors that is in this piece of fabric. So I don't know what I'll make out of that yet, but it's going in my stash somewhere. So let's make these little burp claws. So you just take your cuts of flannel, lay them right sides together, and lay your pattern out here and cut around. So I've already done that since you don't have to watch me cut. Just cut around, right around, doop, 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 cut that. Now, if by chance you're using a, f a flannel that is from another store that may not be quite as wide and you can't get this whole length, because your fold and your salvage on there, if you can't get that whole leak, you can take and fold your pattern. Let me fold it here and show you. And just make it just a little bit shorter. It's gonna be just a little bit shorter of a burp cloth, so whatever it takes to get your width of fabric on there, you can just cut that. You don't really even need a pattern for the square one. You just cut with the fabric, and then this one is, let's see, that is about eight and a half inches. So an eight and a half inch piece, right sides together, and then we just take it to the machine. I'm gonna put my um, quarter inch foot back on here, and I have my open plate on because I was finishing up the other ones. So it's just a straight stitch around, get that thread under there. I'm gonna leave an opening spot, go forward, back stitch, so it might get a little loud here, but I made five of these in about eight minutes. But um, I don't know how many of you have seen the tutorial for the self-binding baby blanket. I'm sure a lot of you have. You can look that up, but you can get your flannel to match. Get your flannel to match your side and make a self-binding baby blanket that matches your burp cloth along with the quilt that you're going to make the baby. So, just go zoom, zoom, zoom all the way around. It's loud, isn't it? Yeah, so you may have to slow down around your corners a little bit there, but not too much. We'll chit chat while I'm turning it. Leave an opening there. Hopefully I left a big enough opening. 
I'm good at not leaving big enough openings, so I like to struggle. Why not? Then take your scissors there, and you can clip the corners if you have very much extra there. Just don't clip into your seams, just so it makes it lay a little nicer. But um, just wherever your rounded corners are, and then on that inner curve piece, if you're doing the double dog bone, you know, you clip a little bit more. Just a few. I enjoyed watching everybody's lives last week. I didn't get a whole lot of much done. I got um, most of my blocks done for my one quilt I was working on. So now I just have to put the blocks together so maybe I will soon have a top done. And then I still have to finish top stitching on my quilt that was the um, my Halloween that I applique. So I'm appliquing all those circles on. Now I gotta find my find the opening. There it is. Ooh, that's a small one. Might have to get the Jack the Ripper out here. Uh oh. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it. I think it'll work. Yeah, I worked a whole lot of hours last week, so didn't see much. And then this week I'm gonna work more because I'm just cruising for a bruising. Yeah. All right, we got that all turned. Didn't make you watch me struggle with that, but I did not have to rip it out. Um, all turned. Had these handy little forceps here. Um, I got those. When well, they were going to throw those away at work one time, and they were brand new, so I got several of those. But you can use a chopstick, you can use your finger, whatever it takes to turn that, and then just take it to your iron and press that flat. Then go back to your machine. Now's a chance you can use your decorative stitches. It's just a zigzag. And I'm just gonna do a zigzag here. Um, and I put it a, about an eighth of an inch to the edge, just so I can catch the edge on here, my opening. So let's get that done real quick. Oop, look, see, I've told you not to do that before. Let's fix that. I put back my quarter inch stitch, but then I did not change, so. I may have to put you on hold while I find a new needle. All right, new needle here. You know, I switched back to my um, quarter inch foot to do that straight seam after I've been doing zigzags, finishing up the other ones. So I didn't make sure before I turned it back on zigzag. So now I have to cha have to change the needle out, that broken needle. That machine, I can pull it out backwards. Some machines don't pull your thread out backwards. Just thread it back up, but you don't want to do that too often. That can mess up your um, mess up your machine pretty well, as long as as well as break a needle. So waste the needle, waste a little thread there. And I just unthreaded, so let's thread it back up again. I bet nobody's ever done that before. That was a first, huh? Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Good reason to start out slow. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get this stitched back up here. So this is just a normal zigzag with a 1.5 um, length. Some machines you might have to slow around going down the quarter, the corner there, so you don't skip a stitch. My little machine here does not skip too often. Almost done. Is my machine getting loud? That's a sign. little thread off on top before I get back to it so I don't stitch it down. And 
back stitch again. Now you know when you're if you're sewing baby clothes or baby blankets, you should not really use invisible thread because a little loop there, little toes and fingers can get stuck in those and those don't break. They're not good. So there we have a little burp cloth for our baby. Let me put it on this shoulder. So reversible burp cloth. I did cats. Two cats with the straight edge and the curved edge. We have little pink pandas. Our pandas on pink with flowers and that's the dog bone with two curves. Did a couple of those. That's the one I prefer. It goes either way. And then we got some ladybugs. And your thread can be just a neutral color, you know, contrasting, matching, however you want to do it. And then I did one of just the straight. So there we have all those. Let me show you something else I got yesterday. Where did it go? Back here. I didn't make this, but I got it. This came from the Calico Cow in Roswell, New Mexico. So this is a huge bag. See how big that is? It's about 20 inches across. Um, but these come, this is canvas. It's a repurposed canvas. And then they also make them in leather. It's a Hope, Hopo Fly, H-O-P-O Fly bag. So I could make bags, but I like this one. And look down here at the bottom. I'm usually not a Western type, but look, we got some flying geese with points cut off. And then I don't know if that's real cowhide or imitation cowhide, but I really like that. So I got that. But there at that Calico Cow, the owner's really nice. She remembered me from being there just one other time before. And her ladies that work there remembered me. So I really like the Calico Cow. That's Angel at the Calico Cow. Hey, Angel. Let me just show you my other blocks I was working on. So there is block A of the other quilt I'm working on. So I needed 24 block A's and 24 block B's and then I just have to finish getting these put together and then this will be done. So I need to go take a nap so I can go to work tonight and tomorrow and the next night for nine in a row. So I will catch you when I can. Come back next Wednesday and we'll see what we do on that Wednesday's quickie. Talk to you soon. Bye.